Hello. My name is Ellen Berry. I'm an assistant professor of sociology at the University of Denver and soon to be at the University of Toronto. And I've foregone the slide today, but I have brought a prop encouraging you to read my new book, The Enigma of Diversity, and even better to buy the book, please. <laughs> All right. The point I'm going to make today is that all too often, talking about diversity is a way for well-intended white people to avoid racially threatening ideas and situations. Talking about diversity is all too often a way for well-intended white people to buffer ourselves from potentially um, uh, threatening challenges to the, to the favoritism that we enjoy. As a sociologist, I've spent more than a decade investigating this term, asking what do we mean by diversity? What do we accomplish when we make diversity our goal? I've done years of first-hand ethnography, dozens of interviews, poured over reams of historical documents. My research has taken me from the US Supreme Court during debates over affirmative action to the halls of a Fortune 500 company. Understanding the history behind this term is crucial. Diversity came out of law as a rhetoric it gained popularity in the field of higher education, where white leaders use it as a rhetoric to justify the inclusion of limited numbers of people of color, particularly black people, into overwhelmingly white settings. Over time, it traveled to the corporate sector, where it, be, um, where it got swept up with gender, with sexual orientation, now um, with diffuse concepts like, um, like cultural difference and lifestyle. But all the time, race has, be, re, re, has continued to be the modal category of diversity. It, tends to be, it continues to be what we assume diversity to be, and that's especially true for older generations. Based on my research, I've concluded that diversity is how we talk about race when we can't talk about race, when we don't want to talk about race. Diversity has become a stand-in all too often when discuss open discussion of race is too controversial or when white people find the topic of racism uncomfortable. Bol diversity seems pol polite. It seems hopeful. It seems unobjectionable. Uh, there's a poll of by Pew that found that 61% of respondents believe that the growing racial and ethnic diversity in this country is a change for the better. And they actually rated diversity right after email and the internet. So up there. <laughs> But the term diversity has become watered down, so watered down that it can be anything from code for black people to a profit imperative. In my ethnography of corporate diversity management, I had the cringeworthy experiences of sitting in on trainings where we learned that diversity could be whether we were a daytime or nighttime person. Or was our, at one point, we choose our favorite animals to represent the kind of diversity we were. So I want to acknowledge that it's not just white people who talk about diversity. It's not only about avoiding racism. It can appeal. It can be a basis of appealing to unity, right? It can get used um, to uh, solicit inclusiveness of all kinds. Sometimes in the name of diversity, we disavow outright hate. And these are all very important uses of the term. But however much it might feel good, talking about diversity is not enough. We are in this paradoxical moment. We are reflecting on the tenure of our first African-American African president. Uh, and at the same time, we're questioning racial brutality and policing. And when we treat these as diversity issues, we too often resort to a celebratory optimism that's about valuing difference and leveraging difference for everyone's benefit. Diversity leaves us without a language for making sense of ongoing racism or deliberating effective policy responses. And perhaps the biggest problem I see with diversity is our tendency just to talk about it and not to take demonstrably effective action. We say we value diversity and then we hire people who fit with our organizational culture. We say we value diversity, but then we share that valuable information about how things really work in our, in our company with people who seem like us. And again, my subtext here is of people who are more likely to be white. But then we don't support policies that research shows can bring about demonstrable improvements for people of color, like affirmative action, like u collective union bargaining. Instead, what we usually get from the diversity moment, movement is doctored photos and college brochures. We get investment banks that have a diversity department but continue to hire affluent white Ivy League grads. grads. We, um, in many situations, get a denial of racism. Diversity is not the wake-up call that white America needs. It's the snooze button. Thank you.